Now I give the floor to Mr. Bloom, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Look, in a, in, in a free society, it isn't the role of politicians, especially those politicians with so little commercial experience, to decide on who should sit on a board of a private company. It's a concept worthy of the old Soviet Union. In England, professional women are deeply hostile to the concept of gender quotas. They are committed to meritocracy. When they negotiate both internally and externally, they want everybody to know that they got there on their abilities, not to make up the numbers. Some British political parties have had a gender quota system. We've had, in England, Blair's babes. We've had Cameron's cuties. We've seen young women put in an impossible position. One product of the British Conservative Party gender quota system produced a junior minister who did not know the difference between the national debt and the national deficit. Women are often culturally attracted to certain professions. They are represented, over-represented, in ra radiography, physiotherapy, and other clinical professions, equally represented now in the law and financial services, under-represented uh, under in manufacturing. Such variations are natural and healthy in a free society. My own party, UKIP, has no gender quotas, yet in the last three very successful by-elections, those results have been produced by women. Women's success in the retail trade is world-renowned. We had a women chief executive of WH Smith, Body Shop, and many, many others, all headed up by women. Last year in England, more than 50% of small businesses were started by women. I've seen, I've seen them personally perform at sea with the Royal Navy. I've seen them work in bomb disposal in Afghanistan. Trust them. Why do you have such little faith in women that they need political patronage? Trust them. Have faith in them. It'll pay dividends for you in the future. Thank you. And next is